Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Well, not much of a shop yet. I'm still on my mini lathe. Big lathe still doesn't have power. But rather than taking two months off to get the shop straight, I'd rather get started turning again. So one of the advantages of living where I am now is I'm near three of my granddaughters. The other day we took them out for my ice cream and as we sat there enjoying our ice cream I thought why can't I turn an ice cream cone? Shouldn't be too difficult is it? Well maybe it can be an ice cream box so that it's hollowed out nice and light and can serve a dual, dual purpose. So here's an ice cream box. Well another thing that I enjoy sometimes on TV is a, is a program called Chopped. It's a cooking show where people come in, but they're thrown some extreme challenges. But one of the themes always in what they do is that they can't just heat up an ingredient and serve it. They must transform it to make it more than it was. So I feel like I've done a little bit here with the, uh, with the ice cream cone, but is it fully transformed? What else can I do to transform the wood that goes into this ice cream cone? So, let's make an ice cream cone and then we'll see how else we can transform it. I already have this cedar roughed into a cylinder. It came from a tree in my backyard in my Oregon. I'm measuring the chuck jaws to approximate the tenon I need to cut to mount the cedar into the chuck jaws nearest their smallest spread. It will be larger, but definitely not under. For the tenon, I'll use my skew and a peeling cut, then part off the length I need for the cone portion, but not completely, since I'm between centers and it would bind. Now I'll switch out the drive center and mount the cedar to the chuck. The tailstock provides a measure of safety to hold the wood securely into the chuck. With a medium gouge, I'm shaping the cedar by eye to my cone shape. A skew gives a final, smoother finish cut. With the exterior near complete, I'd better work on the mortise and hollow it before I go too far. After cleaning up the end, I'm using a handheld drill to drill out the center to a desired depth. Then I'll hollow with a medium spindle gouge. Cutting from the center out with the grain in this orientation enables me to cut into side grain instead of harder end grain. I'm cutting the mortise with a skew and checking it for parallel sides with a plastic pen tube. If the tube lines up with the slot in the ways, it's good. I'll now be careful not to touch the mortise area again with either a gouge or sandpaper. I'm finishing up with a half inch round nose scraper. After a good sanding up through the grits to 320, I'm stopping to cut some decorative grooves on the cone to simulate texture of a big cone. I will not make the cuts equally spaced because then they would have to be perfectly equally spaced. Finally, with a parting tool, I'm parting the cone nearly off. I'll finish this cone with Mylan's shellac friction polish, although I frequently use mineral oil and beeswax before parting it off completely. I had hoped to hold it in an expansion hold using the mortise. However, it is slightly too small, so I'm wrapping it with masking tape to cushion it in the jaws to clean up the bottom. Now for the ice cream. This is oak from a friend's neighbor's tree. 
I've roughed it into a cylinder and then let it dry. As usual, the prime task is to cut a tenon so my chuck can hold it. With it now mounted in the chuck, the prime task now is to size a tenon into the cone's mortise. As usual, it is a cut, test, fit, cut, test, fit, until it's good. I overcut a little and had to move down another eighth of an inch on the wood. Then some shaping work on the exterior so I can know how much to hollow the ice cream. Hollowing the ice cream is about the same as the cone portion. Drill to a desired depth, then hollow with a gouge, followed by a round nose scraper. Then sand and finish. Again, I need some tape to pad the tenon from the jaws. The tape is too wide, so I sliced it down while it stuck to the lathe bed. Finally, cut a final finish on the ice cream with a medium spindle gouge. Then, sand and finish the ice cream. I like my ice cream cone. I hope my granddaughters like it also. The next question is, how else can I transform wood into an ice cream shape? Please share your ideas and pictures on other possible transformations. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. Please leave your comments. If you can, please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Till next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>